guys, my name is Emily, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be wrapping up the month of May. While it wasn't like a really video heavy month for personal reasons, it was a very reading heavy month. I read a lot of things and I'm gonna share those things with you now. So the first thing that I read in the month of May was Beneath the Sugar Sky by Seanan McGuire. So Seanan McGuire has written two other books that fit into this universe and that is Every Heart a Doorway and Down Among the Sticks and Bones. Down Among the Sticks and Bones is sort of the prequel to Every Heart a Doorway, although publication order Every Heart a Doorway comes first with Down Among the Sticks and Bones after it. Beneath the Sugar Sky logically sort of comes after Every Heart a Doorway, where the first two are very dark and atmospheric, Beneath the Sugar Sky is significantly like fluffier and brighter and more fun. So the premise for all three of these books is a critique and a subversion of the portal fantasy. So I'm sure that we're all familiar with like the classic portal fantasy of Narnia, the idea of these children finding a doorway in a wardrobe, stepping into another magical world, living this life where they fit in, and then finding their way through the portal once again and coming back into the real world and in the case of Narnia the kids just live on perfectly like no big deal. Seanan McGuire sort of critiques that idea looking at like when you find your perfect magical world how freaking hard it is to come back into a magicless normal world. These all take place at a boarding school for wayward children. What I especially liked about this one was the like more upbeatness to it. I did really like the first two being very dark and atmospheric. I can't really say anything because this is the third book and I don't want to really spoil anything, but I will say that all three books involve a really diverse cast of characters. They are an excellent critique of the portal fantasy. So I would recommend that you check out not only Beneath the Sugar Sky, but the other two books in the Wayward Children series. The next book I have here is a picture book that I picked up when it came into work because it is just so freaking beautiful. So this is Ocean Meets Sky by the Fan Brothers, who are the creators of The Night Garden, which is also beautiful if you have an opportunity to go to a bookstore and like flip through it. Totally worth it. I think one of my favorite parts of this book is how it looks naked. This is gorgeous. So this is about uh, a boy named Finn who's grandfather told him fantastic stories of the sea and now that his grandfather is gone he decides the perfect way to honor his grandfather is to build a boat and to sail out to sea. Not only is the story beautiful but like it's a very aesthetically pleasing object. So much care has been put into this book. It's absolutely gorgeous and I think young readers will have a lot of fun just looking at these bizarre and beautiful images that have had so much care put into them. And if you have an opportunity to flip through it at a bookstore, I would recommend that you do so. The next book I have here is Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. Now, I already have a video, it was one of the few videos that I did post in May, talking about Holding Up the Universe and Niven's uh, debut young adult novel, all the right places. In the end of my April wrap-up, I believe my April wrap-up part two, if I'm not mistaken, I gushed about loving all the right places and then I sort of retracted and complicated my feelings about that in a video specifically devoted to holding up the universe and all the bright places. So I don't want to say too much because I've already done it. So I will link that down below if you are interested in hearing my thoughts on the two of the books and how um, my thoughts have changed. I will say that holding up the universe is about two characters, Jack and Libby, both of whom are basically personified medical definitions. Overall, like I can't really remember much about the book, which doesn't bode well. Like, wouldn't recommend that you spend your money on it. If you are interested in it, pick it up from the library. The next book I have here is admittedly just like fluffy YA trash and I am not ashamed. I needed this. I needed this. Uh, so I randomly had an overnight after being on days and it just destroyed me as a human and I was miserable and exhausted and I just 
needed something fluffy to read in the bathtub, so I picked up an arc of Listen to Your Heart by Katie West. I was given access to this arc in exchange for an honest review through my work as an Indigo employee, so the publishers sent a giant box of arcs to our Christmas party, and we were allowed to pick up whatever we were interested in. This looks like a really trashy romance, and like, in part it is, but the thing that drew me to it at the Christmas party was the fact that it's about two girls hosting a podcast. So it's actually really neat that this high school has a podcast hosting class. The class works together to host, research, script, produce, edit, uh, market this podcast, and they're developing these skills to sort of work in this new media space. Like, I think that's really neat. And the idea of two young women hosting a podcast I thought was really cool. And the podcast ended up being more of a focus than I was expecting based on the cover. Honestly, don't know if this would hold up to a reread. I feel like on a reread with my brain fresher, I would probably be more critical of this, but my memory of it as it sits is that it was really good and really fun. The next book I have here is a manga. My partner got me a manga because I was sort of interested in exploring mangas, so he picked me up my lesbian experience with loneliness, which I actually really, like, the plot really resonated with me as, like, an anxious sort of lost artsy human. I felt a lot of kinship with the narrator, but I didn't particularly enjoy the visuals, and I feel like if you're reading some sort of visual book, picture book, graphic novel, manga, whatever. The art style is a large part of it for me. Like, I will often pick up things purely based on the cover art. So I decided to try out a couple of different mangas. I actually have two in this wrap-up. The first one being the top-rated boy love manga. It showed up on some list as being, like, pretty up there as something that you should read. And that is Ten Count by uh, Rahito Takari? Takari? butchering all the names. The reason I picked this up was for the, just the silliness. Apparently in boy love manga you have this weird anatomically non-existent self-lubricating butthole that is in the place of a vagina but on a boy, and I was like, this sounds really silly, and given my interest in sex and moye, I was like, yes, I definitely want to read about butthole vaginas give me the butthole vaginas. This did not have any butthole vaginas. It is very much the setup for a long series and a somewhat problematic relationship between a mental health counselor and a civilian who um, has, well, I don't know that we can trust the counselor's diagnosis because basically the counselor recognizes that the main character has some issues with germs and the counselor's like, hey, I'm a counselor, here's my business card. And so the guy gives him a call and then instead of meeting in his office and having like a professional counselor-patient relationship, they start meeting up for coffee and he sort of informally counsels him and makes him create an exposure therapy list that starts out very small and, like, I assume will lead to sex with another human being just because of the nature of this book. The bad mental health counseling, the hinted at relationship between the counselor and patient, the fact that they're not really counselor and patient, but they are counselor and patient, I didn't like, and then there were no silly vagina buttholes, so... This was a huge miss for me, and I will not continue with this. The next book I have here, I was given access to a digital arc by the publishers in exchange for an honest review through my work as an Indigo employee. I actually liked it so much that I ended up purchasing my own copy of it, and that is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. So Monday's Not Coming follows Claudia as she attempts to investigate her best friend Monday's disappearance. Monday and Claudia are both young black women. Claudia is slightly better off in terms of her class positioning. Monday is in a very low-income neighborhood in a slightly unsafe, slightly very unsafe neighborhood, and Monday has some 
issues within the family home. Claudia goes away for the summer to visit a relative in another state. Monday stays at home in their hometown, and they sort of lose touch over the summer. They intend to send letters and, like, keep in touch, but Claudia comes back, and Monday's not there to greet her. She can't get a hold of Monday. She's a little bit worried about going into this next school year all alone, but she knows that Monday loves school. She knows that Monday would never miss a day at school, and she's for sure gonna see Monday the next morning, on the first day of school. And she gets to school and Monday's not there. Monday's not anywhere. So Claudia is really worried because this is really out of character for Monday. Claudia starts to go through the appropriate channels for reporting your friend missing. Like she goes to teachers and the guidance counselors and she's like, hey, have you heard from Monday? Like she hasn't shown up. Then she goes to the police and she says, hi, my friend Monday is missing. Like nobody has seen her. I think you need to look into this. And the police officers like show her this wall of missing and murdered girls. And they're like, see these actual cases that are really important? Yeah. Yeah. You need to not waste our time anymore. Okay. It really looks at the justice system and the values that systems place on certain bodies. I think in many ways, if you liked The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and the discussions that it brought up, I think Monday is Not Coming is also going to be really thought-provoking. Claudia goes through all of the steps to find Monday, to acknowledge that Monday is missing and is failed on every level by the systems that are put in place to keep young people safe. I think there's a lot going on in Monday's Not Coming, and I think it's a really important read, and I think it's a really great book club read. So the next book that I have here is Pudding by Julie Murphy. So this follows Dumpling. Now, I have not read Dumpling. This still stands alone. It makes sense. So Pudding is a dual narrative that follows Millie and Callie. Millie is a plus-size girl with journalistic ambitions. So Millie, throughout this novel, is trying to find a way to tell her mother that she is not going back to fat camp this summer. She is going to attend a broadcast journalism summer program at a university. Callie is a school cheerleader who ends up taking the fall when the cheer team vandalizes a local gym that Millie's family happens to own. Callie is the only person who is identifiable on the security footage. Through working off her community service at the gym, Callie and Millie sort of develop this at first contentious relationship and then good friendship. And I thought it was just a really cute, good feeling story. I wasn't crazy about Callie as a character, but I really liked Millie as a character. I liked that she was so confident and that she loved herself and she accepted herself and that she had like quirky crafting hobbies. But overall, it was fine by itself. I enjoyed it. And I think if you like Julie Murphy's writing, you should definitely pick this up. So the next book I have here, I picked up because I heard Emma Books talk about it. And that is The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. So content warning right off the bat, this is a story story that deals quite graphically and explicitly with the sexual assaults of Eden and the following mental health uh, issues that Eden deals with. If you are not prepared for that, don't read this book. I actually skipped the chapter in which Eden recounts the experience and I started reading it and it was just like in the flow of the book. It was too emotionally heavy for me to handle, so I actually skipped it finished the book, and then like a day later went back and read it just to like fully understand what happened. I think that Smith does a really good job of looking at the effects of trauma, of surviving a trauma, because her abuser is somebody who is a close family friend, basically like a second brother. And the four-part structure of this story covering grade 9 to grade 12, we get to see how that trauma and that fear weighs on Eden as a person and changes her as a person, changes her relationship with her friends and her parents. I thought that exploration of trauma was really interesting and really well done. If you are prepared to read something like this, I think, again, this could be really interesting for provoking interesting discussions, but so many content warnings on this. Like, it is graphic, so 
The next book I have here is an ARC that I was given access to as an Indigo employee in exchange for an honest review, and that is Learning to Breathe by Janice Lynn Mather. Now, this book has actually been compared to The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. So this is the story of Doubles, who is a high schooler living in the Bahamas. It's actually an own voices novel because the author is from the Bahamas herself. Again, it explores sexual assault, so heavy content warnings on this. Doubles used to live on an island with her grandmother and her mother is sort of unfit and flits in and out of the pictures. So the primary caregiver of Doubles is her grandmother. And her grandmother decides that in order for Doubles to get a better education. She needs to leave this island and live in a bigger city, have access to more resources, and so Doubles is sent to live with her aunt and uncle and cousins. So when Doubles is sexually assaulted and this results in her pregnancy, Doubles is at a really, like, tipping point moment in her own life because she knows that she can only keep this a secret for so long. I think the story for me is a little simplistic and I think it could have pushed certain things a little bit further to provoke more discussion. The next book I have here is the manga Your Name by Makoto Shinkai and Renmaru Kotone. I'm genuinely sorry. So this I liked a lot more than the other two mangas that I have read in terms of both story and visuals. What drew me to this is the color palette on the front. Mangas are not colored. What I have learned through sort of exploring a couple of these now is that I am much more into anime and I am much more into visually stunning bright graphic novels. I know that's not what a manga is. So I'm just realizing that this isn't quite for me. I enjoyed the story, I enjoyed the idea of these two characters of two different genders when they fall asleep sometimes wake up in the body of the other person and sort of get to live life through somebody else's eyes. I think that's a really cool premise, but I think instead of continuing to read, I will watch the movie. The last book I read in the month of May is the new Stephen King, The Outsider. So this is gorgeous. It is a gorgeous cover, um, and that is about all that it has going for it, in my opinion. I read this. It's a super quick read. It is a summary read. I read this outside, and I felt like being outside in this heat wave that we're experiencing in Canada right now it just helped set the mood for the story, which I thought was perfect. And, like, it was a fast read, and I did enjoy it. Like, there wasn't anything that I really hated about it, but the longer I think about it, the less... I like it. So the premise is basically a young boy is brutally murdered. The person who is accused of his murder is the local Little League baseball coach, Terry. The police are pretty confident that it's him because people who know Terry well saw Terry pick up the boy and put him in a van, saw Terry emerge from the woods covered in blood and acting weird, and on top of that, the boy's body is covered in Terry's DNA. So the police think that they have a really solid lock on who murdered then brutalized this little boy. Until they discover that Terry has a really solid alibi and was actually in another city. And they're like, well, how can this be true? Some police detectives, some private detectives, and then the wife of Terry start investigating, like, what happened? T humans can't be in two places at once. And so this group of humans starts to investigate, and it really goes from there. What I really liked about this book and I think sort of clouded my initial, like, reaction to the book is the fact that Holly from the Mr. Mercedes Bill Hodges books shows up. And I love Holly. Holly is one of my favorite Stephen King characters. And so to see her again in The Outsider was fantastic. It again clouded my perception of the ending until I had time to stop and sort of process and digest. Stephen King books really go one of two ways for me. It's either that the supernatural stuff really grabs me or it's the characters that matter. And I feel like this book had neither going for it. The supernatural aspect was kind of meh and then the characters that were developed were kind of meh except for Holly, but she was 
a character that came into the story like fully fleshed out from another series of books. While like my initial reaction to the book was I love this, this is fantastic, like perfect atmosphere, good amount of supernatural stuff, Holly the longer I think about it, the less I'm impressed with it. I think my initial rating for this on Goodreads was four stars, and the more I think about it, I think it's more of a three-star book. A five star is like perfection, four stars is this was good, three stars is this was okay. And for me, now that I think about it, this was okay. So like if you're a longtime fan of Stephen King, obviously you're gonna read this. If you are new to King, I wouldn't start here because the best part of this book is Holly, who is a character that is developed in another series. Like, if you don't want to read his entire body of works and you're curious about this one, I think you at least have to go back and read the Bill Hodges trilogy first, especially if you don't want spoilers for the Bill Hodges trilogy. So those are all of the things that I read in the month of May. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have you read any of these things? Did you like any of these things? Let me know your favorite book from the month of May. Here's to June, a new start, a hopefully uh, more creative, present month. Hopefully I will see you very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.